Jill Clark is one of the few people to have successfully transitioned from player to commentator in badminton. The six-time Commonwealth Games gold medalist turned to the microphone after calling time on her illustrious career and is now regarded by many as the voice of badminton. At the request of her many fans from around the world, Jill answers some of their burning questions about her work. Obviously, knowledge about the sport, uh, very important to impart information about the athletes, give stats, uh, certainly helps to have empathy with the athletes, also helps to have uh, tactical analysis, be able to see what's happening tactically. Essential to have a uh, good delivery, um, being able to articulate enough to express yourself clearly. And I think it's also important to have timing. I don't think it's any good wittering on about stats or tactics when the match is really exciting. That's when you should let the action just speak for itself. But I guess most of all, I believe it's important to add to the pictures, not just describe what's happening. That's what a radio commentator would do because of course the audience can't see what's happening. Unbelievable, that was going out the back. What a rally. I don't believe it. Oh! Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely amazing. Well, probably because of the hours and hours I spend preparing for commentary, um, I have a whole database of what I hope will be interesting stats and preparing those stats actually takes an awful lot of time because uh, whilst I get all my information from the internet, it's not always in the format that I think will be that interesting. So you have to pull it out and decipher it uh, from all that information that's out there to put it in a form that I think might be interesting uh, for the viewers. Never tired of commentating, but commentating does sometimes make me very tired because I regularly work between 12 and 14 hours a day. And then after breakfast, I don't tend to get a meal and sometimes nothing at all to eat until I'm back at the hotel at eight or nine o'clock in the evening. So long hours with no food often makes me tired, but no, I don't tire of commentating. The long hours, the fact that we don't get the order of play, uh, so we don't know which matches we will commentate on until very late at night, um, the day before the, uh, the commentary is going to take place. So obviously I can't start my research or prep until I know which matches are on the TV court. And I think that's probably the most challenging part. Great question, Esther. Uh, two things. First of all, being a woman. And when I first started as a lead commentator, and perhaps I should explain the difference between a lead commentator and uh, a color commentator. The lead commentator does the introductions, uh, gives all the stats, and actually leads where the commentary is going to go by asking questions of the colour commentator in my instant either Steen or Morton and therefore I control in what direction the commentary will go by those questions and when I first started uh, being a lead commentator there was plenty of female sports presenters and reporters and most of them are in front of the camera plenty of um, female colour or expert commentators but I think I was probably one of the first female lead commentators and it's still regarded very much as male domain. Secondly, I think that whilst I personally believe that uh, my background as a former world number one badminton player is an advantage, I think some of the decision makers about who does the commentary uh, believe that because of my sporting background that I cannot be a professional broadcaster and therefore I shouldn't be the lead commentator, I should be the colour commentator. But it's interesting because I competed as a professional player for 15 years. I've been a broadcaster for 25 years. 
Broadcasting is my main career. It's not playing badminton. Giovanna, if you mean, uh, do I watch previous matches uh, that a player has played uh, prior to commentating on them? The answer is no, there simply isn't time. But I do update my entire uh, database of player profiles and tournament stats after every single BWF tournament. So one, when one tournament has finished, I make notes in my own database of how every player or pair from the tournament I've just been at in every discipline, who they beat or who they lost to. Uh, and in all honesty, across the five disciplines, that's a couple of days work. So I usually do that uh, both on the flight from one tournament to the next, um, and also on the non-commentary day in between previous tournaments. And that's how I have uh, such detailed stats on all pre previous results from all players and pairs.